In today's video, I'll share with you 5 formatting tips that you must know in Luca Studio. We'll cover 4 different data types such as time duration, currency values, percentages, and 2 formatting for date. Hi, this is Essa from The Analyzer. This channel shares useful tutorials to help you build practical reports. I've gotten a few questions on how to format different types of data in Looker Studio, which formerly known as Google Data Studio. In this video, I'll answer all of that in under 10 minutes. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we'll learn how to deal with duration data type. In the example here, we have a scorecard for average duration which I got from Google Analytics. If you look into the data type, you can actually see that average session duration is a duration in seconds. Same for the session duration field is actually in the same data type as the average session duration. So the main reason of us changing the format of this duration metric, it's because the original format is hard for the users to read. One simple trick is actually to change the format of this duration into seconds. We can do it at the property panel by going to the metric and click on the edit button and under the type, change it from duration into number. So now after we have changed the data type, you will have the average session duration in the seconds unit. You may also rename your scorecard to make it even clearer for your users what the numbers mean. However, sometimes we have a longer duration. For example, for our session duration, if we convert it into seconds, the number is just too big for the users to interpret. So what we would do is to convert this into our unit so that it is easy for the user to digest the information. We will start by creating a calculated field. After you click add a field, you will see this windows open up. In the formula space, you can key in session duration and divide it by an hour which equivalents to 3,600 seconds. If you want to keep it simple, you can write divide by 3,600 instead of what I'm showing on my screen. That's just my personal preference. You can choose to follow your own ways, whichever makes it easy to you. Now let's replace the scorecard matrix with our new calculated field. Now we have successfully converted a metric from duration into hours unit. But let's say if you want to convert a duration into minutes unit instead, you can modify the formula by dividing it by 60 seconds instead of the 3600. So that's about the duration data type. Now we're going to move on to the second data type, which is currency. In Looker Studio, you can add a currency symbol in front of your metric very easily. To do that, go to metric and under the type, change the number into currency data type. Then select a currency of your choice from the list. Here, we'll just choose USD, US dollar for now. You can see that this number has been changed into the currency format with the dollar sign added in front of the numbers. And there's also decimal points added to the number. However, this is not the best way of doing the formatting because what we are doing just now is just formatting the metric at the chart level only, which it only applies to this particular scorecard instead of applying the changes of the format to the entire report. So in order to change it for the entire report, we will have to do it from the data source level. In this case, we'll go into the data connection, look for the field and change the data type from number into US dollar. So now when we add new chart for the same metric, it will automatically format it in the currency format that we have set in the data source level. So we don't have to format it again for the new chart. Next, let's talk about how to format a percentage. In this example, 
I have a calculator field that helps me calculate what is the discount percentage. However, after I created the formula and put it in the scorecard, it doesn't show it as a percentage. Instead, it's showing as a decimal point. So the problem is that the current calculated field is actually a number format. So we'll have to change the data type into percent. However, as I mentioned earlier, I wouldn't prefer to do it at the chart level because I'm going to use the same metric in another chart. So I want them to format it properly so that I don't have to go into every chart and format them individually. That is pretty time consuming. So the trick here is to do it in the data connection. We're going to change it from the number into percent data type. Now click finish and these changes will be applied to your scorecard and all other chart that has used the same metric. Next, we are going to discuss how to format a date into your month. This is a very common application that you are going to need in your report. For example, here we have a daily trend of the sales. In this kind of time series chart, sometimes you may want to show the monthly trend and having the date as the x-axis makes it difficult for the users to look at the higher level. So we are going to change it to year month x-axis instead of the daily trend. So now let's copy this chart and put it down here so you can compare it easily. Here what we can do is to toggle the drill down button at the property panel. Now you will see three different field being created here. The first one is the year, second is the year month, and the third one is the date. This is also known as hierarchy in the business intelligence domain. So you also have a default drill down level, which means when your user look at this page, this is the dimension that they are going to look at. Since we are setting it as the date, they're going to look at the same view as the previous chart. Now when you hover on the chart below with the hierarchy, you can see that there is an arrow up. This allows you to drill up from date into year month. Since year month is the format that we need, with just one click, you are able to switch the view from daily into monthly. If you click one level up, you can even see the sales trend by year. So this is very useful, but if you just need a year month format, you can just delete the rest of the dimension from the list. So you can have this monthly trend over here without having the users to draw up or draw down. Next, we are going to move on to week, which haven't already covered. So for week, we are going to copy this chart again and this time you're going to go to dimension. You're going to click on this and then you will have this windows opens up. Under the type, you're going to click on this drop down and select ISO week. So now you have the week number labels here. But as you can see, we have our data set involving data from 2021 up to 2022. So this is actually not the correct representation of our data because this chart would mislead people and they would think that and this sales is happens in one single year because it's showing from week one to week 52. So make sure you only use it when your data involves just one single year. But in our case, because we have involved more than one years of data, we can actually use ISO year week. So now you can go to the dimension and edit the field. Now change the data type from ISO week to ISO year week. So this data type will label your X axis in the date instead of the week number. However, when you hover on the line, you can actually see which which week is referring to. So that will be the last tips I'm sharing today. 
Do you have any other formatting issues that you're facing right now? If there is, please leave your comments below and I'll take a look into it. Before you go, if you want to learn more about working with date and time in Lurker Studio, including how to format them into the format that you want, I'll share the playlist in here and also the description below so you can refer to them next. Also, if you love this content that I put here, please smash the like button to let me know. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.